Welcome to Designers Friday. I'm California architect Steve Rendell. Please join me to investigate the fascinating and intricate subject of residential design. On this episode, we will examine the architecture of two historic prairie-style homes and four California prairies that followed the landmark examples. History. The prairie-style house is one of a few architectural dialects that originate purely from American soil. Considered modern architecture, as the prairie style had no precedent and presented new concepts, such as open and flowing spaces, and more connection to the exterior landscapes. Its creators of the late 1800s and early 1900s delivered a fashion that continues its influence to present day. While many architects studied and propagated prairie design, its most famous author is Frank Lloyd Wright. Architects Lewis Sullivan and Henry Richardson also contributed to the development of the prairie style. By being among a group of Chicago architects who pursued modern architecture through the creation of the skyscraper. Their apprentices, including Wright, began the introduction of modern residential architecture through the prairie style house. Prairie architecture greatly influenced the subsequent craftsman style which became one of America's most prolific residential fashions. As well, prairie themes translated all but loosely into the ubiquitous American ranch style into the 20th century. In relative numbers, the prairie style maintained a modest popularity, being most replicated in the Midwest, but lost its appeal within 20 years of its creation. Currently, the prairie style is rarely but enthusiastically reproduced around the country. Composition. According to Virginia McAllister's A Field Guide to American Houses, the prairie style is commonly found in four configurations. The first arrangement is a symmetrical design with a low slope hip roof with an entrance door located on the front elevation at center. The second arrangement has a hip roof and symmetrical elevation with an entrance door on a side elevation. The third configuration is an asymmetrical elevation and hip roof with an entrance door in a less prominent position. And the fourth composition is an asymmetrical elevation but has a gabled roof. Prairie style houses can be singular form such as a four square or their hierarchy can include one or two intersecting forms with several minor extensions. Overall proportions appear bold and commanding on prairie homes, however, the articulation of windows, doors, and other details give them a friendly human scale. Some prairie designs were balanced with symmetrical compositions, while asymmetrical designs were balanced with the visual weight of primary forms and offset by secondary extensions and details. Horizontal emphasis of different features provided a rhythm, such as a series of casement windows. Solid masses of walls, features, and oversized hovering roof planes gave prairie style its structural expression. Form The prairie style has an evolutionary sequence to its overall form. Frank Lloyd Wright's earliest prairie, the Winslow House, is a two-story symmetrical design that translated into the vernacular through the American Foursquare. It is a boxy impression at first glance, however, a prominent hip roof and broad eaves distinguish the design beyond the ordinary. Prairie School architects later translated the style into more sprawling forms that stretched in several directions across the landscape. The low-pitched roof hugs the ground and provided a cozy canopy under which to reside. In warmer climates, concrete slab foundations allowed an even lower profile a precursor to the ranch style. Frank Lloyd Wright's Roby House in Chicago, one of his most famous landmarks, illustrates the apex of the style. With its masculine horizontal emphasis and elegantly relaxed forms, in gable roof versions of the prairie style, the eave or rake of the gable can be flared outward at its apex to produce an accentuated profile of the roof form, a trait that later translated onto some versions of the ranch style. Perforation 
As in any building, doors and windows refine the character and done correctly enhance its soul. In the prairie style house, entrance doors might have several or small panes of stained or clear glass. In some grand examples of the style, side lights provide further elaboration to an entrance door. Windows with sashes that slide up and down past each other, a wide double hung, or tall and narrow casements that usually open outward from the side, like a door swing, provide the openings for prairie houses. The windows can have multiple panes in various patterns or be a single pane of glass. Other windows can be fixed and stationary to remain sealed, and any window can have stained glass and leaded grids within them, often with geometric patterns with organic inferences. Later examples of the prairie style often have rows or ribbons of windows to further desired a horizontal effect, occasionally wrapping the corners. Integrated planters or boxed planting shelves along elevations added a unique architectural element to the prairie style theme. The planters, often capped with contrasting coping, acted as screens for porches and patios. Some prairie style houses had portico shares that allowed a visual release from the solid forms of, on the primary structure. Details Since the prairie style developed in the Midwest, brick structure and brick veneer became the primary exterior finish material. The prairie school architects mixed brick with stucco or wood siding and decorative patterns in some cases. Frank Lloyd Wright's Winslow House has a band of decorative material at the second level above a contrasting coping over the brick below. Very broad E's define the trademark of the prairie style house, extending as much as four feet. While hipped roof versions had boxed or flat eave line, the gabled versions had an open or slanted eave that made the transition from the rake seamless. The prominent roof-to-wall juncture allowed a place for interesting geometric detail. In some examples of the prairie style house, an intricately detailed frieze, the wall immediately below the eave plane, gave them a further distinguishing characteristic. Prairie style porch columns details vary, with the exception that they are large if not massive to the scale of the building. While earlier Midwest examples of the prairie style used masonry columns, later interpretations translated those into wood or combinations of brick and wood sharing traits with the craftsman style porch column. Massive chimneys with contrasting coping atop the form are another trademark of the prairie style, which anchored the composition. The prairie school architects introduced the solid railing, the modern concept allowed a continuous flow of planes in brick, stucco, or wood. Folk versions of the prairie design often reverted to more traditional wood baluster railings, though always with rectilinear forms. Depending on budgets allocated for the project, finishing touches on prairie designs included elaborate frieze, as mentioned, or plaster and concrete reliefs, and organic patterns or floral expressions. The intricate details echoed the decoration favored by Lewis Sullivan, the Prairie School Architect's mentor. You've been watching Designers Friday, presented by architect Stephen C. Randell.